Welcome to the FET friction simulation activity. You can get to the application by Googling this string or I'll put the link in the description for this video. Go ahead and create this spreadsheet. Create it in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. I'll put a link to this image in the description so you can click on it and have it as reference. Once you start the application, click into friction. Turn on all of these options, and at any point if you need to reset, click this orange button and start all over. And again, we're going to click all of these options to start out with. This 50 kilogram box is our first object that we see in the spreadsheet. Watch what happens when I walk up to this box and start pushing on it. You're seeing Newton's third law in action. I'm applying a 55 Newton force to the right and a 55 Newton force is opposing me directed to the left. This box isn't moving because there's friction. If there was no friction, it would move. Watch what happens when I turn off friction, walk up to the box again, and even if I apply a small force, the box starts to move. You can see the speedometer indicate that it is starting to move with an increasing velocity. Once again, click reset, turn on all of these options, and now the goal is to walk up to this box and figure out the exact force needed to just set it in motion. Here goes, 37 Newtons isn't doing it, increase, 58 Newtons still no motion, increase some more, 80 Newtons the box is remaining motionless, and notice that the, my 80 Newton force is counteracted by an 80 Newton friction force. The sum of the forces as indicated is zero. Let's not give up. There's 98 Newtons, still no motion. 120 Newtons, still no motion. And finally, I think I'm getting close there. So now I'm really going to pinpoint the exact force that just starts motion. I'm going to do this one more time and this time be very precise in determining the force. Click reset, turn on all of these options. And instead of grabbing the person with my mouse, I'm going to use these numerical controls down here at the bottom. Using this control, I can jump from 0 to 50 to 100 and now I'm going to fine-tune my adjustments. Watch what happens when I click one Newton at a time. I'm going to stop at 123 Newtons because that's, I think, where the break even happened. One more click to 124, still no motion. One more click to 125, still no motion. 126, and now you can see the box start to move. So that's my break even point. 126 Newtons set this box into motion. 125 Newtons wasn't enough. 126 Newtons is sufficient. I'm going to reset yet again and dial my force up to 125 Newtons. This is right at the break even point. I'm applying a rightward force of 125 newtons and friction, specifically static friction, is exerting an opposite and equal force of 125 newtons to the left. That is the static friction force. Notice that the static friction force is scalable. For example, if I decrease my applied force to 75 newtons, the static friction force shrinks to 75 newtons. If I increase it to 125 newtons, the static friction force keeps pace. Let me say that again. Again, static friction scales to be whatever it needs to be to keep the object at rest. Now I'm going to increase my applied force from 125 newtons to 126 newtons and keep your eye on the friction force. Right now it says 125 newtons. I would expect it to say 126 newtons when I apply 126 newton force, but here goes. There, at 126 newtons, the box starts to move but notice the friction force mysteriously drops down to 94 newtons. This is the kinetic friction force. I transition from static friction to kinetic friction. The coefficient of kinetic friction is less than the coefficient of static friction. Okay, time to update the spreadsheet. The mass of the box is 50 kilograms. The weight of the box is W equals mg, so let's type in equals, click on the mass value, times, which is asterisk, 9.8 for the acceleration due to Earth's gravity, and hit enter. The normal force is just the weight of the box. It's sitting on a flat surface, so the downward pull of gravity is opposed by an equivalent amount of upward-oriented normal force. So in this box, I'm just going to activate it, type in equals and click on the weight force. It's that easy. 
For the kinetic friction force, let's go back to the simulation. I reset everything and once again I'm applying a 125 newton force. The static friction force has grown to 125 newtons going to the left and as soon as I increase my applied force from 125 to 126 newtons, you can see the box starts to move and my friction force is now kinetic friction and it's reduced to 94 newtons going to the left. My applied force is still 126 newtons so there is a net force of 32 newtons in the right direction which is why I'm accelerating. This is my kinetic friction force that I'm going to enter into my spreadsheet. 94 newtons. Enter. Okay so I'm done with the first trial. The next trial is man. Click reset, put the box away, select the man. Now you just repeat the same procedure you used with the crate. Check all these boxes and start doing some trial and error to see what force is needed to just start motion and update the spreadsheet for this trial. You know the mass of the crate, you can compute the weight, you can read the kinetic friction from the simulation, and once again the normal force is the same as the weight force. The next trial is girl plus one box. Click reset, turn on all of these options, and on top of the crate place the girl. So the total mass now is 50 plus 40 or 90 kilograms. So that's it. Your next task is to complete this spreadsheet in its entirety. Make sure you use the spreadsheet functions to do the calculations. Don't fall back on your calculator. When you finish your spreadsheet, you need to graph the results to determine the coefficient of kinetic friction. Let's review some basics. The equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, where y is the dependent variable, m is the slope, x is the independent variable, and b is the y-intercept. m equals slope, and generically it's rise over run or change in y over change in x. When we look at the expression for kinetic friction force, we see F sub K equals mu sub K, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction, that's your dollar sign, times F sub N, the normal force. So in our case, we're plotting the kinetic friction force versus the normal force, and we know what the slope of a best fitting line provides. Update your spreadsheet to include the result for coefficient of kinetic friction, mu subscript k. Submit your spreadsheet table and your spreadsheet graph that you created based on this table.